Bismillahirrahmanirrahim. We are going to now discuss uh, 5090 O-Level Biology Syllabus 2023, which has slight changes in this chapter. And this is going to be discussing chapter 14, which is coordination and control. Now, when you look at the syllabus, which is 14.1, mammalian nervous system, state that the nervous system, brain, spinal cord and nerves coordinates and regulates body functions. Describe the mammalian nervous system in terms of the central nervous system, CNS, and the PNS, which is the peripheral nervous system. Then identify on diagrams three types of neurons, sensory, relay and motor neurons. Then state that electrical impulse travel along neurons. Usually you say messages travel along neurons. Well, this is not an SMS. This is an electrical impulse. Describe simple reflex arcs in terms of receptor, sensory neuron, relay neuron, motor neuron and effector. And the effectors can only be muscles and glands. So M motor, M muscle. So motor neuron supplies muscles and glands. Describe a reflex action as a rapid and automatic response to a stimulus. Describe synapse as a junction between two neurons. Describe the structure of a synapse, including the presence of vesicles, molecule, synaptic gap, receptor protein. Describe the events at a synapse. Impulse stimulates the release of neurotransmitter. Neurotransmitter diffuse. Impulse is stimulated. State that the synapse ensures. Now, all this is new to the syllabus. All this is new in the syllabus. And you have to be knowing this because you're going to get questions and MCQs on this which you have never had before. So this is what we need to really understand that this is part of the new syllabus. First thing first is that we have to know what is central nervous system which is abbreviated CNS. And this is called the peripheral nervous system. So central nervous system and peripheral nervous system. As you can see in the central nervous system we just have the brain and the spinal cord. So just the brain and the spinal cord make up the central nervous system, right? Peripheral means, periphery means to the outside. So periphery is going to be these vessels which are bringing impulses to the spinal cord and also those which are taking away impulses from the spinal cord. So one will be called the sensory nerves and then they'll be called the motor nerves. So peripheral nervous system is actually made up of only the spinal nerves and spinal nerves of two types. One which carry impulses to the spinal cord. So these are these ones coming here and going to the spinal cord. And the ones which take away impulses away from the spinal cord. And those would be the motor nerves. And the other ones are called the sensory nerves. So another very brief overview. Uh, nervous system is divided into CNS and PNS. CNS is made up of the brain and the spinal cord. And the others are the nerves. 12 pairs of the cranial nerves which are in the brain. And 12, 31 pairs of spinal nerves. The rest of it is not in your syllabus, so I'm not going to talk about that. Another diagram showing you that brain, spinal cord and the blue is the peripheral nervous system which is made of the ganglia and the nerves. Now basically what does the central nervous system do? It consists of the brain and the spinal cord, sorts incoming sensory information, generates thoughts and emotions, forms and stores memories, stimulates muscle contractions and stimulates glandular secretions. Now, if you look at the peripheral nervous system, what does it do? It has two divisions, sensory division and the motor division. The sensory division transmits impulses from the sense organs. That's how you can see, you know, when you're looking at it, the retina forms an image. And then, of course, the brain corrects that image and all that. So sensory division corrects sense organs, sensations. You feel something hot. You can see, you can hear sensory organs. We'll talk about that in, for, in the next uh, portion of the syllabus. And then there is the motor division. And the motor division is made up of motor neurons which transmit impulses from the brain and the spinal cord. From the brain and the spinal cord, central nervous system, to muscles or glands. So basically we're going to be talking of muscles and glands which are the motor neurons. So somatic but we're not going to go into details of that. Peripheral nervous system, sensory division and motor division. Sensory division carries impulses from sensation. Like you say, oh my god, this is very hot. How did you know this is very hot? Well, you guessed it because the receptors in the skin are stimulated and they will transmit an impulse to the spinal cord and that information goes to the brain and you say, oh my God, this is very hot. Or you might have, or somebody might close your eyes and put a block of ice on your hand and you'll say, oh, that's very cold. There's something very cold. Maybe it's ice cream. Maybe it's ice. So motor neurons carry impulses too. Like you touch something hot and you withdraw your hand. How did you withdraw your hand? You withdraw your hand because the motor neuron impulses carry impulses electrical impulses don't say messages electrical impulses to the muscles in your arm and the biceps muscle contracts and you pull your hand away and you say oh my god that was something very hot and you nearly burnt your hand 
Now, just to make you understand the overview of this topic is what does the peripheral nervous system do? Connect the central nervous system to the organs, limbs and skin. Carry sensory and motor information to and from the central nervous system. Regulates involuntary body actions like heartbeat and breathing. Allows the brain and spinal cord to receive and send information to other areas of the body. Like when you're driving, you're seeing there's another car coming. So then you, of course, change the direction. So it all coordinates all the function. That's why this chapter is called control and coordination. So it allows the brain and spinal cord to receive and send information to other areas of the body. Now we come to the basic structure of the cell which makes up the central nervous system and that is called a neuron. And there are three types of neurons, sensory neuron, relay neuron and motor neuron. So the basic cell which is part of the central and the peripheral nervous system is a neuron. And what we have to understand is that neuron there has to be a cell body. What do we mean by cell body? The part of the cell which contains the nucleus, that is called the cell body. So you can see the cell body here. You can see the cell body here. And you can see the cell body here, which is labeled here. So everywhere, wherever there is the nucleus is present, that's called the cell body. Now, sensory neurons do what? They connect a receptor, like you have temperature receptors in the skin. You have touch receptors in the skin. You have light sensitive receptors in the retina of the eye. So receptor cells and then the impulse is carried away from it. And those those uh, those connecting the receptor with the cell body is called the axon. And then, of course, it goes and connects with a relay neuron. A relay neuron is just a connection between the sensory and the relay neuron. But that also has a cell body and it has dendrites. Dendrites are these short projections which are arising and these are called dendrites. In the motor neuron again we have dendrites and then we have the axon which is carrying the impulses away from the cell body and it ends up in a muscle. Now this would be a muscle or a gland. A muscle or a gland and I'll give you some examples of these reflex actions and then you will understand what I mean by this. So basically a neuron is made up of a cell body. You have to see where the cell body is located and we usually just show it like a circle and then we draw a little sort of thing in the middle to show that this is the nucleus. So this would be the cell body. That's how we usually represent it in any other diagrams that you see. So sensory neuron carries sense from the sense organs. Remember it from the word sensory neuron sense organs. Temperature receptors in the skin, touch receptors in the skin. Relay neurons just connect sensory and motor neurons. Motor neurons carry impulses, M motor, carry impulses to muscles, M muscles and glands. Now further explaining the sensory neuron, I always say since the cell body is somewhere in the middle, it's not in the middle, but it's somewhere along the cell. So you have to have receptor cells on one side and you have to have the nucleus, the cell body somewhere uh, in between or somewhere in in during the whole thing and then it goes to the other and then it's going to connect with a relay neuron. So sensory neurons have to have receptors at one end and you see the direction of the impulse is away from the receptor cells. Then if you look at a motor neuron, the motor neuron has to end. See the direction of impulses. It's towards the muscle or the gland and you have the cell body, you have the dendrites on it and you have the axon terminals on that side where the muscle cells or the gland cells are going to be present. Now we come to the uh, topic of reflex action. Reflex action is a rapid and automatic response to a stimulus. Like for instance, you touch something hot and you withdraw your hand, that's a reflex action. So number one is very rapid. And number two is automatic. Automatic means you don't have to think about it. It will happen as it is. You don't have to sort of think, okay, should I do this? Should I not do this? No, 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 no. It's going to happen automatically. So number one, if you look at the first point, there's a stimulus. So there's a heat or something hot lying around. Number two, pain receptor stimulated. Number three, the signal sent along the sensory neuron as an electrical impulse. And you can see the sensory neuron here is in red. Please pause the video here and have a look at the diagram before you continue with watching it and hearing my uh, lecture with it. So signal is sent along the sensory neuron, which is an electrical impulse. And then of course you see it enters here into the, and it's going to enter the spinal cord. This is the spinal cord that we are talking about. 
So signal passes along the relay neuron. The relay neuron is the one in green. So the signal passes along the relay neuron and this of course this electrical impulse also goes to the brain and the brain is also informed. Number five, this electrical impulse signal sent along the motor neuron and you see the motor neuron is this one which is in blue. So the motor neuron then goes M to M muscle. So it goes to this muscle and the muscle contracts and that results in a response. So effector muscle contracts and then there is a response. So number one, there is stimulus. Pain receptor stimulated. Number three, signal sent along the sensory neuron, then along the relay neuron, and then along the, it reaches the motor neuron, and then the motor neuron goes to the muscle and it makes the muscle contract. And when the muscle contracts, you pull your arm away. Now, in a reflex arc, what you have to understand is that there is a microscopic gap between the neurons. Here and here, you can see. Now, this gap is called a synapse. So, there's a gap here and there's a gap here. So, there are two synapses. Where the sensory neuron meets the relay neuron, there is a microscopic gap, I said, and that's called a synapse. So this would be the presynaptic neuron and this would be the postsynaptic neuron in this synapse. But then in this synapse, this would be the presynaptic neuron and this would be the postsynaptic neuron. So because impulses can only travel in one direction. So it has to go from sensory to relay and then from relay to motor. So the one before the synapse is called pre, like you say preschool presynaptic neuron and the one after it is called postsynaptic neuron like we say post partition when pakistan and india 1947 so post partition then post uh, the 1947 what happened pre means pre means before post means after so presynaptic and postsynaptic neuron please everybody needs to be clear on this now another diagram showing you the reflex arc there's a reason why i've given you this diagram what you have to understand is that the sensory neuron the cell body here is outside. That's called the dorsal root ganglion. So the cell body of the sensory neuron is outside in the dorsal root. And then, of course, you can see the cell body of the relay neuron is inside and the cell body of the motor neuron is here. That's inside the spinal cord. And then, of course, it goes to a muscle. So you must remember this is that the cell body of the sensory neuron is outside it is not inside the spinal cord because this is the spinal cord which we are showing you and you can see this is continuing like this. So it's a transverse section of the spinal cord. Please pause the video here and look at the labeling because you must know the labeling. What is the cell body, nucleus, myelin sheath? Of course, myelin sheath is that covering which is covering the axons and of course that speeds up the impulse. So uh, myelin sheath is a fat coating and it's not continuous, it's in gaps. And this is uh, the covering, which, of course, causes it to be very rapid. It's 100 meters per second. The ones which are myelinated, non-myelinated are only 0 0.5 meters per second. The transmission is so fast. So reflex arc, rapid response to a stimulant as the pathway only involves three neurons. Now, first of all, what we've got to get clear is that the direction of impulse is in this direction. So the synapses are these microscopic gaps here. Now these gaps, there'll be a presynaptic neuron, which is the one before the gap and the one after it is. So this will be the presynaptic neuron, which they've shown you in blue. And then this is the postsynaptic neuron. So this is a postsynaptic neuron. In the presynaptic neuron, you have vesicles. In the presynaptic neuron, you have these vesicles containing neurotransmitter, and you see these mitochondria along with it because a lot of energy is needed. So energy is released by the aerobic respiration in the mitochondria. So these are called vesicles, which contain a neurotransmitter called acetylcholine, and we just write it in abbreviation as ACH. So vesicles containing acetylcholine. Now, some of this information is more than O levels, but I would like you to know it because then you can understand it properly. So presynaptic neuron and vesicles containing neurotransmitter or vesicles containing acetylcholine. And on the postsynaptic neuron, you can see here, you have these receptors, you have these channel proteins. 
and these channel proteins are called they are only for sodium channels and they only allow sodium ions to enter so these vesicles which contain neurotransmitter will actually release these first of all these these neurotransmitter these chemicals which are called acetylcholine they will be released and then these will diffuse across the cleft and then they will attach onto these receptors and then electrical impulse will be generated in the post synaptic neuron a very nice diagram showing you this number one action potential reaches the axon time what is action potential action potential means an electrical impulse reaches the this is the pre synaptic neuron number two calcium channels open calcium ions diffuse in calcium channel how much calcium causes vesicles to release so the, this will cause these vesicles to move and fuse with the presynaptic membrane and then they will of course burst that is called exocytosis and then this neurotransmitter is released and this neurotransmitter now is going to cross this gap so neurotransmitter crosses this synaptic gap neurotransmitter binds to receptors it binds to receptors on this so it is going to bind here bind here bind here and this triggers a signal in the post synaptic neuron so this is how and you have to know this detail by the way this need detail you've got to know i'll just go through the syllabus once again at the end of this another diagram showing you this pre synaptic neuron impulse arrives calcium ions enter synaptic vesicles move fuse with the pre synaptic membrane release it in the synaptic cleft this is the synaptic cleft or the gap and then this neurotransmitter binds to sodium channels and the sodium channels open sodium ions diffuse in impulse generated in the post synaptic neuron i always like to choose diagrams which show biology as beautiful as i see it and some of these diagrams are absolutely marvelous and this is a very nice diagram which shows you number 1 how the nerve impulse arises arrives in the presynaptic neuron this is the presynaptic neuron and you see the calcium ions diffusing in because the calcium channels open and calcium ions uh diffuse in i said diffuse in and this causes these synaptic vesicles to move and fuse with the presynaptic membrane and then of course it releases the neurotransmitter the neurotransmitter then attaches to the sodium uh channels which is called a ligand gated channel and they open and sodium ions diffuse in and an electrical impulse will be generated in the post synaptic neuron now another thing which you have to see this is only going to be in this direction why because the vesicles are only present in the pre synaptic neuron there are no vesicles here in the post synaptic neuron plus these uh, sodium these ligand gated channels they are not present in the pre synaptic neuron they are only present in the post synaptic neuron so that is why it is always unidirectional and that's very important that it should be unidirectional so it will always go from a sensory to a relay and then relay to a motor neuron because the synapses ensure one way transmission the synapses ensure one way transmission because of the vesicles being only in the presynaptic and the postsynaptic only having the channel proteins for uh, where the receptors are going to where the neurotransmitters are going to bind so they have the receptors for the neurotransmitter on the post synaptic neuron another way beautiful diagram showing you this action potential which is terminal number 2 voltage gated calcium channels open number 3 calcium enters the axon terminal number 4 neurotransmitter releases and diffusion it diffuses across this gap the word diffusion has been used remember this this is going to come in an mcq so neurotransmitter diffuses across this uh, very microscopic gap and then binds to receptors and number 5 neurotransmitter binds to post synaptic receptors neurotransmitter is removed from the yes after some time it has to be removed because you will need an enzyme here to remove it because it shouldn't bind to it permanently and keep on transmitting impulse in the post synaptic cell like your biceps contracts but then it needs to relax again so you need to straighten your arm so it's not there for long it needs to be removed immediately also from the synapse because so that it doesn't keep on allowing electrical impulse firing in the post synaptic neuron another very detailed uh, explanation for those students who want to know a little more detail some students like to know it very briefly but some of you who are 
are very keen biology students love to know it in a little more detail so i'm giving you all that an action potential arrives and initiates synaptic transmission sodium channels open depolarizing the axon membrane depolarization of the terminal membrane causes voltage gated ca calcium channels to open calcium enters the cell triggers fusion of acetylcholine vesicles with a presynaptic membrane number 5 acetylcholine molecules diffuse across the synaptic cleft and bind to receptors on the post synaptic membrane number 6 activated receptors open chemically gated sodium channels and depolarize the post synaptic membrane the spreading depolarization fires an action potential in the post synaptic membrane Number seven, acetylcholine in the synaptic cleft is broken down by the enzyme acetylcholinesterase, and the components are taken back up by the presynaptic cell for resynthesis. After synaptic transmission, acetylcholine and vesicles are recycled, so they are again reconstituted. So the acetylcholine, which is again reused, and again it is then packed into vesicles and is ready for reuse again. So this is a slightly more advanced bit. If you can understand it, fine. If you can't, well, it's fine as well because you'll do it in the A levels. Now, if you look at the syllabus 14.1, it says describe the structure of a synapse, including the presence of vesicles containing neurotransmitter molecules, the synaptic gap, and receptor proteins. Describe the events at a synapse. An impulse stimulates the release of neurotransmitter from vesicles into the synaptic gap. The neurotransmitter molecules diffuse across the gap and bind with receptor proteins. An impulse is stimulated in the next neuron, and state that synapses ensure impulses travel in one direction only. So this is the syllabus that which I have covered, and this video we will complete. 14.1 has been completed for you, and in the subsequent videos we will have the rest of this chapter, which is of course quite lengthy. So we'll complete that in the other uh, two videos following this. This completes 14.1 and thank you very much. Thank you for subscribing. Thank you very much.